All right. For today's ethanol demonstration, I'm going to talk about water and fuel. In this jar, is regular gasoline, 10% ethanol. Anything you'd find at a regular pump today you put in your car. This is 91 octane non-oxy, non-ethanol, zero ethanol. A big problem that people will voice or say is that ethanol creates water problems. All right, well, let's add some water to it, see what happens. These two jars have identical amounts of fluid in them. Here's a cup of water. I'm going to suck an equal amount of water for both. Inject that in there. One half teaspoon in each. Alright. May have to come up here with a video camera. Right on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely separated on the bottom. This is in the non-oxy. Your fuel pump, your fuel lines, and your small engines, they go right from the bottom of the tank. If you've got water sitting on the bottom, the non-oxy is going to give you the trouble. Let's look at the regular gasoline. Swirl it around a little bit. just to make sure that you can see how it separates. Oh, this one is separated. Must be. It has to be more water than what the ethanol can, the 10% can contain. This one is much more separated. It is actually pooling up separately. This one is trying to separate, but it's more water than what the 10% ethanol in it can separate. And you should never have that much water in your fuel in the first place. So, actually, there is a product that is advertised to remove water. This is an off-brand of heat. It is a gas line antifreeze and water remover. It's not a little jug of little guys that are going to go in there and bucket out water. It actually contains methyl alcohol, which is methanol, wood alcohol. Ethanol is ethyl alcohol, grain alcohol. They're similar in some ways, different in some ways, but they have the same water removing principles. So, let's take a look at our jars. And this one is actually dissolving a little better. And this one is very separated at the bottom. Now, I have a jar of E85 that I'm going to blend in with these. I'm sure the makers of this E0 never thought that E85 would hit it. About the same goes. Okay. Now, swirl it around, and both should have enough ethanol in them now to for sure, for sure get it off the bottom. Okay, yeah, this one is totally gone now. That's, I mean, it, you shouldn't have as much water as I added in your fuel tank anyways, and this is obviously much smaller than your tank. Hopefully you can see, but there's now nothing at the bottom. This one, 
there's still a little bit more on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that with the video, but there's still separation at the bottom. So, let's fix it. Let's add some more ethanol. We'll swirl it up. And let it sit. Now the reason this is better is because it equally moves the water throughout the fuel so that it will go through the engine. If you're suffering water problems, either drain it or add some more gasoline and it will take away or it will move the water evenly so that it burns through the engine. Same thing as what this would do. There's a saying that goes, if you have water problems in ethanol blended fuels, I highly suggest you stop pouring it in there. There's usually, there could be three reactions to that. Either you could get mad, you could laugh, or you're not understanding what it means. What it means is, I see way too many lawnmowers, wood splitters, all sorts of small engines stored outside in the rain. Gas tanks are the same way, gas cans, they're not sealed. They're, I mean, you're having water issues right there. And condensation and humidity you could, have this, you could have the same problem there if you let it in a, in a uh, high humidity place with sunlight. Let's look at the... Alright, this one is 100% dissolved. Whoop. Swirl it around and you cannot see any more water separation at the bottom. This one is looking pretty. Not one speck at the bottom. Ethanol actually helps the issue. So, I hope you uh, understand that uh, ethanol is definitely helping your fuel and not hurting it when it comes to water. I, uh, I thought that one half teaspoon would dissolve in uh, E10, but apparently it uh, was too much water. But like I said, you should, never, you should never have a half a teaspoon of water per 16 ounces in your gas tank. That, that is meaning that you are doing a very poor job of storage and you need to look at where you're getting your fuel, how you're keeping it, and make changes. But as you can see, when I added E85 in both of them, there is no more water separation at the bottom.